Hello, and welcome to Recipes with Ben. And today, I'm finally using the Philly Sour Yeast with my honey ginger lime recipe. Last year, I fermented this batch with WLP051, which gave a crisp and clean flavor that was lifted up by the citrusy lime character and the spicy ginger notes. The hope with combining this yeast and this recipe is to get closer to the honey ginger lime that Cascade Brewing makes, which was the original inspiration for this beer. So with all that said, let's brew some beer. Okay, to start, I'm gonna use my Gigawart brew kettle. And to that, I'm gonna add three gallons of reverse osmosis water. I'm then heating that up to strike temperature, which is 155 degrees Fahrenheit. And once the water starts to warm up, I'm gonna adjust my water chemistry with some brewing salts with the target water profile on the screen and the exact amounts listed down below for this size. Now that I'm to strike temperature, I'm adding this mesh bag that will hold the grains during the mash as I'm using a brew in the bag method. The grain bill for this recipe is 90% American two row, 5% flaked rye, and 5% rye malt. And I'm aiming for original gravity of somewhere around 1082. But I will say I made one miscalculation on this recipe, and that is that I bought the same amount of grain as a 2.5 gallon batch, meaning that my original gravity would be a little bit lower. And I'm doing this as a three gallon batch. So to make up for that grain loss and get back up to the gravity of where I'm trying to aim for, I'm gonna add some dry malt extract after the mash. So once all the grain is added into the mash tun, I give everything a stir with my brew spoon and break up any dough balls that may have formed during the addition. And I'm going to mash at 155 degrees for 60 minutes. And after 10 minutes, what I like to do is get a pH reading. And for me, this was 6.6. .6. So I need to drop that down to somewhere around 5.4 or in the range of 5.2 to 5.5. And for me to get down to that range, I only need to add one milliliter of lactic acid. Then after one hour, I raise the temp from 155 to 168 degrees Fahrenheit and mash out for about 10 minutes. And then I move outside and I pull the grain bag and place it onto this large colander that I use to drain any of the extra liquid into this other kettle. To hit my pre-boil volume of 3.1 gallons and my pre-boil gravity of 1052, I rinse the grains with about a half a gallon or 1.75 liters of 180 degrees Fahrenheit water and squeeze the bag using the lid on the gig wart. Now that I've hit my target, I'm adding a half a pound of light malt extract. And the best way that I've found to add any kind of sugar to the brew kettle is to take out liquid that's already hot from the kettle, add it into something like a mason jar, mix it until it's dissolved, then turn off the heat so it doesn't scorch when you add the sugar back in, and then slowly pour the super saturated liquid back into the brew kettle. I also find this works great for things like honey or lactose or any other sugar you're gonna add. And as I said, turn off the heating element so if it does sink, it won't burn at the bottom and then give everything a big stir. And at that point, I turn the heat back on to a boil and took out a 200 milliliter sample to get a brew boil gravity, which for me was 1.050, which is about two points lower than I was expecting. Once I got the pre-boil gravity, it came back outside and the water had started to hit a rolling boil. But since it was so cold outside when I was doing this brew day, I had to switch from the 600 watt to the 1600 watt to maintain a boil during the whole time. Next, at the 60 minute mark, or the start of the boil, I'm gonna add my first hop addition, which is a half an ounce of tahiki hops. This is supposed to give some kind of lime characteristic to it or other citrusy notes. That'll help to enhance the lime that'll be added later. At the 30 minute mark, I'm gonna add the second addition of hops, which is another half ounce of tahiki hops. And then at 10 minutes, left, I'm going to add a whole bunch of stuff into the boil. So in this case, I'm going to add a half a pound of chopped ginger, the peel of four limes, the juice from those four limes, and one ounce of motika hops. And then I'm also going to add 0.75 pounds of honey to the kettle using the same method as I described before. Then I chilled down the wort to 70 degrees Fahrenheit and started transferring it from the kettle to my fermenter. That was already sanitized beforehand using some of the water from the cooling. A tip I picked up from Homebrew for Life, shout out Homebrew for Life, is to pour the wort over a mesh strainer to catch anything that comes from the brew kettle. So I used this strainer that I sanitized right before I was using it and transferred all the wort into that to gain about 2.4 gallons of wort. Let me know if you have any other easy tips like this to help in the brew day and drop a comment down below so I can see and share with everyone else. With all the wort now into the fermenter, it's time to pitch the yeast. So I'm gonna add the whole 11 gram packet of this Philly sour yeast right over the wort. And then I added a half a teaspoon of yeast nutrient and I placed the lid on top that I just sanitized. I aerated it by shaking it back and forth and added the airlock on top of that and let it ferment in my basement for 20 days. I took an original gravity right before I put it away and it was slightly lower than I wanted it, but I think that's gonna be okay at 1074. I've read there can be some lag time with this yeast when forming air bubbles as it first has to sour the wort and then starts to convert the sugars into CO2 and alcohol. 
But for me, when I checked it the next morning, it already started bubbling at a pretty healthy clip, so I let it ferment in my basement for 20 days. After that time, I took a final gravity reading, and it was 1.022, making this beer 6.8% ABV. I also wanted to share this with some friends, so I bought off three 12 ounce bottles and added some carbonation tablets to those bottles, and the rest made its way into my keg. And if you want to see how I keg my beer, I'll link that video down below. But with all that said, let's see how this yeast worked and give the beer a final taste. Here we have the honey ginger lime that I brewed and then fermented it with the Philly sour yeast. So the head reminds me of like a Belgian wit or something like that where it's a tight white bubble. It's at 10 PSI on the keg right now. The color of it reminds me of almost like hazy lemonade. It's got this golden hue to it. It's very light, uh, but it is hazy because I think some of that flaked rye in there. On the aroma, you kind of get like subtle like almost like lemon candy is what it kind of reminds me of. It's very bright and then there's a little bit of the residual um, like spice at the end, but it's pretty minor. I don't really detect a whole lot of hop aroma in it. Yeah, so overall right now, it really does remind me of like lemon candies, like those little like kind that you get so it's got like this nice light acidity to it. I think honestly, the problem I've had with both these batches is that the ginger is really intense in the beginning. And as it ages out, it really mellows out the ginger flavor. So I don't know if it needs like a secondary charge of ginger on it. It's not bitter at all. So there's not really a hot profile that's going into it, but the yeast is definitely the dominant feature here. It is lightly acidic. It ferments pretty well. I got like a 70% attenuation. It's like max, I think it's like 74, 75. So it's not too bad. You know, overall it did do what it said it would do. It made it a slightly sour beer. It's nice and clean at the end. Worked pretty well at high ABV. This is a 6.8% beer. You know, it's light. I just wish that some of the other more complex things that I tried adding into the boil were also being you know, added into this. I think the yeast really just dominates the flavor characteristic of this, but that's not in a bad way. I think that this yeast now would probably pair fairly well with something that you almost want to be like a lemon candy or lemon bar sour. So maybe like going after like a lemon meringue pie, you know, inspired, you know, pastry sour where you're using this, maybe adding some graham crackers, some cinnamon or vanilla, and maybe some actual lemon in that to kind of help round it out, maybe to increase that citrus, that citrusy character and lemon character using citra hops instead. Um, so I think of the two times I brewed this, the other one was just a really, really good um, honey, ginger, lime, like all the flavors kind of hit. I think, you know, the ginger is really good. The hop character in the last one was really good. It was crisp and clean. This one, the yeast takes over and it's just that acidic. So overall, I think if you're looking for a way to make a sour beer that has lemon characteristics to it, try the Philly Sour Yeast. Let me know a suggestion that you have for other beers that this yeast probably goes pretty well with. Again, I didn't need to do any kettle souring, so that was a nice thing. Supposedly, it doesn't leave any issues with you know residual souring of further batches on the beer, but after I brewed this beer and took it out of the fermenter, I immediately you know cleaned it with some PBW to kind of alleviate that residual leftover characteristic. So that's the Philly sour yeast with the honey ginger lime ale. Let me know what you think. If, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you don't miss out on any other future brews or any other recipes that I make. And cheers. Thanks for watching.